So now we're getting into a special kind of rational equation called the combined rates equation. <clears throat> and it has the form that you'll recognize from what we've been doing in the rational equations. But it's for a special set of circumstances. And I'll just, um, before I describe the equation, I just want to go over a little example. Let's say we have a work shed. Okay, we've got a little work shed here. And uh, so-and-so, um, I don't know, Bruce. Bruce wants to build himself a work shed. And he knows it's going to take him, if he does it alone, 30 hours. Okay? So he asks someone for help. Uh, let's say he asks his wife. Uh, what's her name? Her name is Valentine. Okay? So he asks Valentine for help. And Valentine can probably get it done in about 40 hours if she were working alone. So the question is, how long is it going to take the two of them working together to get this shed done? Now, your first reaction might be just average those two numbers together, right? Is it going to take 35 hours? That's the average. Well, that's not the case because that's actually slower than Bruce's time if he worked alone. So we're not averaging. We're doing something else with this uh, combined rates equation. And I'll just, we've been over some of the theory in class. I'll just write it here. This is the total time, 1 over t, and that equals 1 over the first person's time, I'm calling this person A, plus 1 over the second person's time, and I'll call that person B. So in this example of Bruce and Valentin, uh, their total time is given by this equation. 1 over t equals 1 over 30, that's Bruce's time, plus 1 over 40, that's Valentin's time. And to do this, we have to use common denominators. Remember how these work? So take a look at this equation. What are the various pieces of this equation missing? Well. Let's, let's give ourselves some more room here, and I'm going to write common, I'm going to write uh, crazy ones to make this common denominators. So this one looks like it's missing a 4t. This one over here is missing a 3t, and this one over here is just missing a factor of 120. And now watch what happens. You'll see why I chose those particular crazy ones. We get 120 over 120t total equals 4t over 30 times 40, it's 120t total. And over here we have 3t plus over, again, 120t total. Now it's a rational equation and all the denominators are equal, so we can just cross those out. And all that's left over for us is 120 equals 4t plus 3t which is just 7t, which means the time it takes them to work on this shed and get it done is 120 divided by 7, okay, in hours. So let's see what that is, 120 divided by 7. That looks like 17.15 17, 17 hours, or you can leave it as 120 over 7. Uh, either answer should be fine. You don't have to worry about decimals. Just, if you're going to use decimals, make sure it's accurate. Don't just round it to 17. Say 17.14 hours. So that's generally how this thing works. And let's say they only had 12 hours to get it done. Okay, they just wanted to finish it in one day, crank this shed out. Uh, you could even have them add another person. Okay, so let's say uh, we got this new guy over here, Reginald. You could add more people to this equation. Until, well, until you get tired of adding people, you could have four people working. And every time you add a new person, you add a new fraction with their time on the bottom. So that's how the combined rates equation works.